Last week, uh, Tony shared the vision for Ablaze um, that we're going to be pursuing uh, going forward, and um, it's multi-generational, um, continuing the family feel that we have, continuing the transparency, um, and continuing to focus on developing people who build the kingdom of God. Um, and uh, we've defined someone who does build the kingdom of God as a kingdom builder. Um, you know, you often hear such people talked about as leaders, um, and I think that's a synonym for what I'm going to talk about. But um, what is important, and I think that, that is distinct here, is I want to, and we want to, um, expand leadership beyond the horizon of what uh, you typical, typically uh, connotate with, uh, um, with leadership. Uh, people who aren't necessarily um, here to fill the, the stereotypical church positions, but um, they may do some of that and they will go beyond that. It, it's your whole life. Um, we want to grow together as, uh, and partner together as kingdom builders and people who bear good fruit um, and therefore reconcile people, reconcile uh, the world, um, participate in God's reconciling work in the world, um, lead more people closer to him. Um, and um, whether that's you know, being a leader of our peers, um, in our prayer life, in our vocation, um, it's our whole life ministry, 24-7, 365. Um, and so uh, how do we do that? What does a kingdom builder look like? Um, there's a bunch of Minecraft skins there. Uh, but I just realized what y'all were laughing at because <laughs> the slides popped up. Um, yeah. So there's this acronym that uh, Tony uh, has uh, thought through and considered, and um, I think this is a great framework for what a kingdom builder looks like. Um, it's faith, as you can see, if you couldn't read it before. But uh, uh, yeah, and uh, I think there's also one addition that me and Tony talked about, and that is a C, so C faith. <laughs> um, and the C overarches the rest of the acronym. It bleeds into all of the other aspects of a kingdom builder's uh, life, which is faith. And the C is character. So we have character, focus, abide, inspire, team, and heal. Um, all of these are uh, everything that you could think of as far as Tony has thought through and I've thought through um, that a kingdom builder, that someone who is building the kingdom of God um, will be exercising and doing their life fits into these categories in some kind of way. Um, so I will be setting this up. We're going to have a series um, this semester that kind of goes through each of these somewhat, um, but I want to kind of give an overview of like what this looks like to be a holistic kingdom builder um, in the world and yeah, in existence, I suppose, um, as part of a blaze what we want to grow into together. Um, so, first one being character. Um, there's some verses up there. If you're first time here, uh, a lot of times we'll read verses out loud, just people in the, uh, well, you guys, not me. Um, and sometimes I'll read them too. But uh, So yeah, y'all want to start looking those up. That'd be great. Um, this talks about uh, what character looks like. We get into the fruits of the spirit and what the acts of the flesh are, and et cetera. So does anyone have Galatians 5, 14 through 16? Everybody got it yet? The entire law is summed up in a single command. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you keep on bidding, if you keep on biting and devouring each other, watch out, or you will be destroyed by each other. Right. So, good character. We're not going to bite and destroy each other. 
um, which, you know, that's definitely something we want to avoid. If we want to build things, we don't want to tear things down. We don't want to tear each other down or, you know, tear down the people that we're supposed to be drawing closer. Um, and uh, somebody queue up Galatians 5, 22 through 23 as well, because then it goes into that. Uh, between what we just read and what we're about to read talks about the acts of the flesh and, you know, drunkenness and orgies and stuff and, <laughs> and the like. Um, and uh, it says, those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Um, and uh, that's important to us because we're talking about um, being part of the kingdom of God. Uh, so Galatians 5, 22 to 23, I got that. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. Yeah, so if we live by the Spirit, we will then have these character qualities that Adam just read to us. Uh, love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And um, these will enable us to be the free human beings, the kingdom builders that God has always intended for us to be. Um, and, uh, you know, these are, it makes sense that we'd want to be those things and not the other things, first of all, because of general effectiveness, like love, 1 Corinthians 13, love is patient, love is kind, um, doesn't envy, doesn't boast, um, doesn't keep record of wrongs. Um, and that's, you know, helpful for building things and building the kingdom if you're always holding grudges and, uh, you know, you're impatient, you're not kind, you're envious, you're probably not gonna go very far, so just speaking practically. Um, that's all through Proverbs. Um, joy, you're able to celebrate and encourage. You're, um, sorry. Your uh, forbearance, you know, hasty actions didn't lead to regret. Um, so patience, forbearance is good to have. Um, we want to be peaceful and level-headed, clear-headed people um, if we want to be effective. Um, faithfulness, keeping your word, being steady and dependable. Um, gentleness, Proverbs 15.1 um, just talks about how, you know, uh, more wrath comes from harshness. Um, we don't want more wrath. We want more peace and effectiveness. Um, Self-control is important, too. And beyond all of that, um, the verse does say, I mean, Galatians 5 does say those who live like the opposite of these things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Um, and then, you know, by extension, those who live according to the Spirit can be those who inherit the kingdom of God. Now, whether you consider that a salvation thing or not, um, it's clear that if you want to be a kingdom builder and uh, not one who tears it down, then we need to have good character um, as the basis for what we're doing um, and what we're becoming. If we're missing the character traits, we're going to be missing empathy, we're going to be, mi be missing humility. Um, if we want to have a positive impact in the world, a trustworthy, then be a trustworthy voice that people want to listen to, then we're going to need those character traits. Um, and, uh, you know, we're, we're dealing with a world that has many different perspectives and dealing with global national issues and it can all get very dicey really quickly. Um, so many different perspectives. You see something from, from one angle and you think you're right and uh, you see it from another angle and then you go, wow, maybe I wasn't, you know. Um, and we want to be able to, to, to see different perspectives clearly so that we can engage with the world appropriately. Um, we won't be so stuck down into our own, um, into our own views that we can't listen to other people and empathize. And um, if we can't empathize, then we can't lead people closer to God. Um, you know, it's character and em empathy by uh, extension is the difference between driving, if you imagine you're driving and uh, you're looking, maybe some people drive like this, 
if you do, then stop doing that because <laughs> it's not good. But it's, you know that you're in a lane and you just focus on that one lane, like maybe 20 feet ahead of you. Um, and you're just like, okay, if something gets in 20 feet, then I'm gonna slam on the brakes. Yeah, it, it might work for a little while, but it's not gonna work for that long. Um, versus scanning all your mirrors, being aware of what's around you, looking ahead in traffic and being aware of what you're doing. You're still driving, you're still holding your lane, doing your thing that you were gonna do, but you're, you have a bigger perspective um, so you can engage with the world around you. Um, so yeah, th uh, oh yeah, mission trip plug. Uh, we're doing mission trip to the border um, in May. May, yeah, May. yeah. yeah. Uh, so this is an example of how we can expand that perspective, you know, and I think it's great that we're doing that and we should do it more. And I encourage anyone here to go help us with that. We're gonna be, you know, hearing out the, the perspectives of people who are stuck at the border, um, helping them, you know, building things potentially um, it's going to be a great uh, experience and a good way to serve and a good way to, to scan those lanes, you know, scan those mirrors. And so now we get into the actual word, faith. Uh, well, the acronym, faith. First letter, focus. Um, define focus. So at any given time, God has prepared you to serve in a unique way that you've been designed to do. Um, God has given you your particular upbringing, education, culture, um, knowledge, particular resources, time, energy level, temperament, skills, um, personality, disposition, and uh, these things are core to how God has equipped you to live out uh, your gifting and calling right where you are right now. Um, and uh, that's why each of our gifting and calling can look super different. You know, it's supposed to look different. If it looks the same as everyone else, then uh, you probably, you might just be following the crowd. Um, and he gives us these things to share and to point to him. Uh, First Peter 3.10, talks about using your gift. Somebody, yeah, somebody can start looking that up, that'd be great. Um, and all of those verses, really. Um, but yeah. I think it's Corinthians 4, 10. Oh, okay, 4, 10. Yeah, I think that's it. Okay. Um, Correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. But if it's not the verse you're expecting. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. Yeah, that's it. Thanks. Um, typo. Uh, yeah. 410, uh, use your gift. You know, it's a gift. Open it. Use it. Like, somebody gives you a gift and you're just like, oh, I'm going to put this in the drawer and not even see what it is. Like, that would be kind of weird. So, it's the same thing with the gifts that God gives us. Like, we, uh, they're good things. We should use them to uh, support each other and to build each other up and to contribute to the world. Um, God, uh, God worked on us, you know, he's prepared good works for us that, um, that he's prepared and advanced. Um, and uh, David knew that, you know, Psalm 139, 12 through 14, talks about how he, God created his innermost being. Um, God put effort into creating you uniquely and walking with you as you've created, as God has created with you your life and your memories and experiences, and um, they mean something. And uh, I think we should remember that we're created, and um, it makes no sense because of that to act as if we're mass-produced. Um, we're not designed for the same purposes, each and every one of us. Um, we're being crafted, and uh, the Holy Spirit changes us and molds us, so also keep in mind that gifting changes over time and you don't have to find out what your life purpose is right now you know I mean I don't know about y'all I'm 20 23 
that's what what age I am. Yeah, I had to. I don't know why I forget, but um, yeah, like we're young people in general in this room. Um, even if you're not a young person, like it, it shifts. Um, Tony will tell you that. Like he's always discovering, which I think is good and important. Um, and so we should just participate and walk alongside God as we discover what it is that God has given us, what's in our hand at this particular moment in time and uh, in our individual lives and uh, how we can, what opportunities there are to build up the body, what opportunities there are to serve, um, maybe here at Ablaze, maybe at your job, maybe um, at school, um, wherever you are, uh, God will prepare opportunities for you in advance. So be looking out for them. Um, an example of someone I know who does this consistently and who is, you would say, in their bag as far as this goes, you know, they, they are in the pocket all the time. Like this guy, Thomas, at work, um, shout out Thomas if you're watching this, <laughs> um, but he's, uh, he's always just doing his thing. Like you, Thomas doesn't have to say that he's a Christian. You just know he is because you feel it um, in the way that he uh, conducts himself in, in the peace that passes understanding that you kind of just feel exuding from him. Um, and people know that, so if people have a question, they usually go to Thomas. And, uh, you know, it's kind of, I'm sure it could be a little overwhelming to him, but he doesn't show it. Um, he's always willing to help. Um, super hardworking. Um, and uh, he gets to know people, too. He asks about their lives. He cares about them. You can tell that he has the love of God um, motivating him to do that. And uh, because of that, he gets into conversations with people that are deeper than just work stuff. Um, and he actually knows them in their families and uh, can have, he has the, the social currency then to have conversations that are um, maybe about God or um, about you know, giving a Christian perspective into their lives, um, which is huge. And uh, that's his, clearly his ministry at the moment that, you know, is definitely thriving, um, which is uh, really inspiring to me as I learn and discover my own gifting and calling right now. You know, it shifts and changes. I have long-term goals. I want to, like, start a business and whatnot, and that kind of, um, I won't get too much into how my own uh, how I'm, I'm prepared for that, but as far as right now, um, I'm looking like, I don't want to just be treading water, you know, and waiting um, for the time that I can do that. I want to be serving right now in the ways that I can, you know, whether it's three months, a year, two years, just, you know, five years. Um, I want to be ready all the time um, to use the gifts that God's given me to serve others. So what I've started doing um, is just uh, being present with the people on the production floor. Um, they don't usually get engineers that come down there and just spend time, but um, that's kind of something that I'm used to, having worked certain jobs like that. You know, I've sat FedEx and added dry cleaners and whatnot, and you just kind of not all the time. Of course, I do work. I, if my boss is work, watching, like, I do work. But, <laughs> um, you know, you end up standing around a little bit and just kind of chatting it up, and I, I just do that. And um, I think they like that because, you know, it's, there's something about someone who sits in an air-conditioned, climate-controlled, 68-degree office to someone who's down in, you know, various temperatures working on a truck that's I understand you know because I've, I've been there it can be infuriating so uh, I try to uh, make sure that they know that I can come down there too and then we end up having those types of conversations too talking about life family and I get to give that uh, perspective from a uh, you know biblical perspective on those things um, over time and get to know them so um, I think God's equipped me for that too, you know, listening, um, 
being aware of people from all kinds of different backgrounds, that's something that I've been blessed with. I didn't, didn't uh, choose that necessarily for myself, but uh, it definitely has happened. So I'm using that, that gift and that ability. So um, I'm thankful for that. Um, another example, uh, my barber, Steve. Shout out, Steve, if you're watching. <laughs> We're doing a lot of shout outs this sermon. Um, but yeah, he is like definitely one of the most inspiring people I know. Uh, he's a barber, but he's also a therapist, um, basically, and uh, he's also a Christian. So yeah, super, super duper inspiring. He uses that, like that's his thing. He'll, he tells you about that. Like it's not just about cutting hair for him. It's about getting to know the people that uh, are his clients, his customers. And, um, you know, breathing life into them, like giving them uh, wisdom and hearing them out. And uh, the amount of perspectives and God conversations that I've had in that barbershop are just like amazing. It's just so cool how he fosters that environment. Um, so your gift and calling will look different. You know, some people are just are, are prayer warriors, and that is important, too. Um, and a lot of times we don't consider that important. It's so necessary, like prayer works. So um, equally as important as, uh, as the other ones, and infinite other ones, I guess. Um, and so that leads me to a plug for the prayer cards. Like if you need prayer for something, if your life is not perfect, because I feel like I, no one's life can be perfect. Um, yeah, write it down on a prayer card. We have people here who will pray for you and uh, they're always on the on the on the prayer card list and just you know pouring their hearts into it and loving on you through through that so definitely take advantage of that if you you get the chance well you have the chance because the prayer cards everywhere but um, so yeah the third letter in the acronym faith of what a kingdom builder looks like is abide. So abide uh, meaning uh, to, to, to spend time um, with God, to be immersed um, in his truth and in his love. Uh, John 15, 5, if somebody can start looking that up, that'd be great, um, tells us how we bear fruit. Like how do we become kingdom builders that, that, uh, that bear good fruit. Um, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain joined to me and I to you, you will bear a lot of fruit. You can't do anything without me. Yep, it's pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, remain, remain in him. Remain in his love and then, then we'll bear fruit and uh, part of from him can't do that. Um, so we got to be meditating on his truth and on his love and living out our days in his presence, um, praying without ceasing. And I think this is important because if you're a kingdom builder, if you're actually doing something positive for the kingdom, uh, we have an enemy that will oppose you. Um, and we have to be ready for that. Um, you know, our hearts need to be in a posture to see and to receive direction from God and to just be aware of what's going on around us and what's going on in our own hearts, you know, taking every thought captive. Um, Matthew 13, 19 through 23 uh, is a perspective on this that, that Jesus gives us um, about what, what the posture of our hearts does to the fruit that we bear. Um, so whoever has that can help. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. 
The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. But the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces the crop, yielding a hundred, uh, sixty or thirty times what was sown. Yeah, so shallowness, the cares of the world, or general misunderstanding can distract and mislead us, and it can be um, hard to see, you know, what truth is, you know, and, and hard to, to bear any good fruit. But seed on good soil produces a crop yielding 160 or 30 times what was sown. And if we want to be that, you know, we have to be good soil. Um, and uh, personally, you know, it's easy for me to become thorny uh, with the worries of the life, of this life, um, choking out the good fruit, and uh, it'll make my attitude uh, a little bit negative because of that. You know, I've, that's definitely a, a vice of mine that I have to watch out for. And uh, my New Year's resolution, or one of them, was um, I don't really do re New Year's resolutions like that, but for whatever reason, I, I did them this year. But it worked out because I decided I'm going to keep a constant. Uh, internal dialogue with God, just be thanking him for things as I go throughout the day and praying for people and just being just aware of, of where God, of, of the presence of God, you know, with me. Um, thanking him for the breeze and the sunshine, the breath in my lungs, um, for, for you guys, for the ability to, to be up here, right, the privilege to be up here right now, for my job, um, and the job especially. That was, that was important, you know. Um, some days it can be a little, uh, like, I don't want to really do this. Um, but now, you know, being aware and thankful of everything, I come in and I still have joy. And um, it's totally different. I walk in smiling and they're like, oh, wow, George is a little different today. Um, it's like um, that vine with the, good morning, y'all. Good morning, y'all, that guy. Like, some of y'all know, yeah, you, people who, are, who know Vine know. Um, but, <laughs> yeah, that's me now. Um, and uh, people ask me how I'm doing, and I can confidently say great. Um, and uh, it's, you know, it's true to me now. And um, that just abiding and being present with God um, has changed that totally for me. So highly recommend abiding. It's like, you know, definitely one of the, upper strategies in general for, for living life, um, living a Christian life. Um, and yeah, it's, it's totally changed me. So, uh, inspire, inspire, uh, the definition, at least the Latin origin is to breathe life into. So we want to be people who are breathing life into other people and people who are accepting it when people are trying to breathe life into us. So uh, what does that mean? It's just the one anothering verses, um, which is, these are some of them. I can send you this list if you want, just let me know. Um, but yeah, it's a really long list of things that we can do, which is awesome. Like we get the opportunity to do all these things, exhorting one another, stirring up one another to love and good works. Uh, forgiving, bearing one another's burdens, caring for one another, admonishing one another. There's so many of them on there. Um, and uh, it's just amazing when you get to experience these things in the body of Christ. Uh, Walter is someone who really inspires me. Um, shout out Walter. You're doing a lot of those. Um, but yeah, seriously. Um, it's funny how like every time we get together, we end up having the deepest conversations for no, there is a reason, I guess. I think it's because I know, you know, Walter's good at speaking the truth in love. Like, um, I can count on him to be honest about stuff, to tell me when I'm really tripping, um, but also validating my experience and, you know, reminding me of what my true character is. So uh, it's amazing. And this is the type of thing that happens when we try to watch Scooby Doo the Cyber Chase. Um, is <laughs> <laughs> it could be something as simple as that and Walter's here like encouraging me and I'm like wow I life is being breathed into me and I didn't expect that from this 
you know, experience wa trying to watch this silly movie. Um, and yeah, uh, my coworker Eric, and I already mentioned Steve, so Steve is Eric's friend, uh, the barber, and um, they inspired me, you know, they gave me stories about how when they were younger, um, you know, before they knew God, and how God, they could look back and see God drawing them in every situation when they were together. And it's just amazing the things that God saved them from, you know, like talking car accidents and shootouts and stuff. And it's just like, whoa, this is like real life. Like it renews your faith to know that God, God is, I can look back and see God in my life, but you look at theirs and it's like, wow, like it is clear. Um, these are, you know, real encounters with God that uh, that you guys experienced and now can look back because you uh, your eyes are opened, you know, and you can see that. And it's just totally faith renewing to me. So I definitely encourage y'all to, to go into uh, relationships with people who inspire you and to be inspiring people as well because I think that is the design of a lot of these uh, one another in verses. Um, I like to inspire Steve um, by, you know, showing respect to him because he's a good father. Um, I, you know, things happen in relationships, marriages go certain ways, but just um, allowing God to speak into a and to, to alter a broken situation and use it for his glory is just a beautiful thing. And I'm telling that, and he's just glowing. I'm like, this is just amazing, like the way God has designed the body of Christ to work. Um, and so, speaking of the body of Christ, uh, the next uh, element of being a kingdom builder is team. Uh, no one of us can do this ourselves. God has designed us to do this together, to live out this life and to, um, to affect the world and to uh, draw people closer to it. 1 Corinthians 12, 17 through 20, this might be looking that up, um, just talks about how God has placed us just as we want us to be. This might got that. 1 Corinthians 12, 17 through 20. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in, but in fact, God has arranged the parts of the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. Yeah, so God has placed each part, each of us, just as he um, wanted us to be. You know, if we decide, I, I make this joke all the time, but like if the arm just decides, oh, I want to go and be the whole body and I, it doesn't have eyes or like legs or anything, it's just like an arm, like can't really do much. Um, and... I think um, God has purposely done this. It's by God's design, you know, it's that we have to do this as a team. Um, Tony often says uh, God did it so that it uh, would be easier, easier for us to be humble. Uh, if we can't do it all ourselves, then um, our hearts are more good, good soil and we can bear good fruit, um, which is super important. So we have a team here, like let's team together, you know, we have a team of um, believers outside of the church. Let's team with them, too, um, as much as we can. Uh, so, yeah, it's super big. Um, and the last letter in the faith acronym, uh, what it means to be a kingdom builder, is healing. And uh, that's just replacing the lies that we've believed with truth. It's replacing the lies we believe with truth. Um, Romans 12, 2 talks about be transformed by the re renewing of your mind. Um, it's important because, you know, if your mind's conforming to the pattern of the world, so will your actions. And uh, that will end up being the fruit that you bear. 
and uh, we don't want that. We want a big good fruit. Um, as an example, um, for me, I think one thing that I'm healing from is this concept in Proverbs 12:9. Uh, it's better to be a nobody and have a servant than pretend to be somebody and uh, have no food. Um, learning that, I guess I have the tendency, I don't know how I developed this, but process kind of people and experiences in two different ways. People who are kind of for me, who encourage me, like you're going to do great things or less positive, you're gonna have great things. Um, or people who are kind of against me who have told me indirectly or indirectly through their actions that I'm not worthy of doing anything good. And uh, so I try to prove, I have a tendency to try to prove those people wrong, you know, puff myself up with um, looks and achievements, wise words. Um, but I don't think I would have ever gone down that path if I hadn't believed the people that told me that I was unworthy. You know, you believe that you're unworthy. So when somebody calls you out on it, then you have to act on it. You have to react. Um, you don't have to react if you don't believe it. It's uh, inconsequential if that's the case. Um, and so as I heal from that and start to believe the truth that God has made me and made you all of us worthy of good by grace and um, of being a full human being, you know, with a heart, not just the appearance of one. Um, not someone who's, who has to achieve or has to have X, Y, Z, um, but someone who's secure and who loves first. Um, I start to become king to build it that God has designed me to be and do his, you know, is, is you do the same work through healing yourself. You become the person that God has de designed you to be. Um, and uh, so the hope and vision going forward for Blaze and really has always been is that we walk together on this journey, hand in hand with God, healing and becoming kingdom builders. So let me pray.